Welcome to the Euromix Studios. We are in Studio 2 today. I'm Pahamar. And today we are gonna finally release some new download content for you. And yes, that's the Hyper Compressor and the Hyper Bass and the Crossover. It's an um, audio device for Ableton Live 10, newer. And it's something that I've been using. I did it for myself just to kind of be able to leave the loop when you're in Ableton, when you're in the in the session view. It's so easy to just like it's rolling over and over and over. And to, to kind of like take a step out of that, I wanted to create something which fucks with the brain a little bit and makes it harder for you to hear where things starting and stopping. So this one is, um, I wouldn't say like percussive synth, but it grabs something in your project and kind of spits that sound out left and right, up and down, and just like mess around with it. That's also where the name comes from, Hyper Mess. And I recently released uh, a track where this sound is kind of in the center of the song or it kind of helps the groove. It's on uh, my label, Dirty Hands. It's called Hydra T-Dub. It's on this record right here. And today I'm also going to take the time to kind of break down that song a little bit, um, but mainly go through how I used uh, the Hyper Mess to make the track come alive. So I have the project right here and um, I'm going to dive right into it. Okay, welcome back to another tutorial at Euromix. Today I'm going to go through the new download content that we're releasing. It's just as the hyper compressor and hyper bass and the crossover. It is a audio device for Ableton Live 10 and newer. And while you're here, I'm also gonna show you around in a project that I've been working on and also released. It's called Hydra T-Dub. It came out on my label, Dirty Hands, yes now, super fresh. So this is kind of how it looks inside my brain when I'm making a track. Uh, I don't know, it maybe it's a little bit messy, but that's also why we're here. So early in the process of this track, I, just like many of you, work around in the session view, right? And you're looping things over and over and over. And to be able to step out of that, yes, as I was talking about in the introduction, I wanted something for the brain that's not so easy to get attached to. So I created an audio device that grabs some kind of sound source in your project and just spits it out randomly, if you want. And by doing that, you kind of lose the sense of being in control. So in this project right here, I'm gonna start to play the track. And as you see here, I have the hyper mess. This, I, uh, I freezed it and flattened it so you can see the waveforms. And if you have a little look on the waveforms while I'm playing it, you might hear some intergalactic kind of glitchy percussive sounds going on in the background. I'm gonna solo it again for you later, so don't worry if you don't hear it. And I'm gonna start from. Fuck, I'm gonna start from there. So here we go. this this is the one and how the fuck do you create a sound like that well I'm gonna show you how I did um, what you need is a piece of sound source I used here um, oh well I am prepared I'm gonna go back with this uh, I'm going to use a drum rack where I just throw in a couple of samples. 
I have no clue where I found this once, but it sounds like this. This is exactly the type of loop that you get bored at in specifically 0 0.1 millisecond. So be able to um, work with this. I take the hypermass. And what will happen now when I engage the dry wet signal is that you mix in the hypermass and you mix out the original sound. So I'm going to do that, which means that when I play this now, it's going to be completely muted. But it also means that the hypermass is active and is ready to launch. Um, I'm going to play here. And when I'm taking up the chance here, that means that I'm increasing the chance of the hypermass getting engaged. And that will grab the sound and shoot it out of space in different directions. And you can control it somehow here. Um, Distance is the amount of distance between the samples. Random, it's going to randomize that parameter. Stereo is going to take the sounds and shoot it out left and right. Feedback is going to create kind of like an echo kind of effect of, of it. Pitch is obviously pitching it. And mess is going to make it even more messy like that was even possible so i'm gonna start from here and i'm gonna increase the chance first i'm gonna take up the distance because i like it when it's a little bit longer in between here we go while i'm taking down the distance you hear that the samples are getting tighter and tighter, where here it's more like a synthy sound coming into life. Here we can also get a little bit of random. I like to implement the mess quite early in the process. Here right now it's just... I mean, what is going on? Now, like, at this point, you're starting to even care about what you have here. It doesn't really matter anymore, because right now, Hypermess is just on its own. Let's go stereo. Let's go feedback. And I can assure you that there is no start and no end where we are right now. We are just completely lost. So, how do we take the step to actually make something useful out of this? Well... I have a trick where I, okay, it's going to keep on going there for a while. I like to work in audio. As you can see, I'm a big fan of recording things well with my outboard gear, of course, but also when I do something inside of the box. So I'm going to create a audio track here. And I'm going to take the sound from this one, if I can find it. Hypermess. There you are. And I'm going to make this a little bit playable in a way. So once again, trying to get away from, from the loop and from the, from the computer. So I'm going to go with the trick that I like to do. And I'm going to go and map a key to this utility, which is set on zero. And I'm just going to go with the letter Q for now because it's in the top left corner of the keyboard so every time I click Q now it's going to engage the utility which is to zero which means that now it's just playing as it wasn't there now it's going to completely mute the sound and the reason why I'm putting it, putting it before the hypermess is that I want the sound to come in to the utility shoot it into hypermess and then from there, shoot it out this point. You see, I can point an arrow here now. Um, so I'm going to play it here now. I'm going to record. And I'm just going to have it um, playing with the rest of the track. So I'm going to put a good loop here. There you go. 
and so right now it's off because it's on yeah that makes sense we play i'm gonna mute the original hyper message So we're recording the audio from the Hypermass and let's click some buttons on the keyboard. And now I can mute it and now I can fuck around with these parameters while it's muted. So I'm engaging it again. Less random, more distance. Here we go. Pitch. And now we got a loop over here. Let's go crazy with the feedback. Why not? Oh, what the fuck? Is that? Okay. Oh, well. Random. Oh, help. Okay, yeah, 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 calm down. Okay, here we are. We are now hyper messed. Um, oops. So, yeah, well, now I have these two here. Now we can actually use this um, audio file and kind of paste it into the project that we're going, that we're working on right now. Oh, perfect, it's not a full loop. Well, I don't care about that. So I can now go back into no input. And we're going to type here, hypermass printed. Right now you hear that it's just complete the random. What we can do now is a, another good trick that I like to do with basically anything is to quantize this and put it into the same groove as the rest of the project. Because right now, you know, hypermess do not take into account which groove you are in. Uh, I can assure you that. So I'm going to go into 16. You can see down here. You can also go uh, command 1, command 2 to go up and down. I go to 16, I do command A, because I'm on a Mac, you do your Windows thing, I guess control A, and then I go control U. That means it's now quantized. And here I have the groove, I have a 909 groove on mine. So. All these little notes or shots or whatever you can call it is now in the in the timing of your project. You see here it's it's there's there's more notes than you can fit in between the 16 grid, so it's obviously gonna stay there. Let's focus on this part right here. And here you can make the the shots of every sound a bit shorter by taking down the length of the transients. We need more volume. here now. Now we have something which is just kind of untraceable of where these sounds come from. And the good thing with this is that you can take some some sound that you have in the track and make kind of an effect or a percussive loop or whatever from something that you already have in the project rather than scrolling around with your in the library, like desperately trying to find some effects or glitchy sounds or something, which is 
made in a completely different project. Now you're using your own project to be able to to spice it up or even make a song out of it. You know, it's there's no there's no really uh, end of how you can use this. So now when you have the hypermess recorded like this, when you have the waveforms, you can obviously place them on somewhere in the track where where it fits, where you can like kind of glue different parts of the tracks together or use it as a little fill or something. Um, I'm just gonna see here how it sounds when it's played here. Maybe I can try to make a little fill here. You see, here is kind of fortunate something. Here is already a little fill, but I can see how that sounds. Perfect. Gonna happen if I cut this here. Maybe even reverse it. That would be by just clicking on R, the button. Beautiful. That's a good fill that cannot be created by just samples. This is where Hypermess really comes in effective. Okay, guys, before I leave you with your new plugin to explore it, I'm going to show you just real quick how you can also use it on a return channel if you are a send return kind of person, which I am. I put it here on the return channel and I also actually prepared it. And right now I'm just going to take a drum from the drum bus, which sounds like this. See if I can go for it. This is obviously a very hip hoppy hat. And let's see what happens if I shoot that into the hypermess. Yes, I fucking love that. You can see I have the dry wet up in the roof. I have shans up in the roof. Still, it's not grabbing it all the time because you have kind of. You have a sound which is not playing all the time, so there is a chance that the hypermess actually engage the the sound in between the samples, where it actually doesn't, where you can't hear anything, which is the reason why you don't hear it all the time. Now it does. Distance up, random. I like it. This is like probably my favorite settings. I can go up with the mess a little bit. Okay, guys, so if I convinced you to um, get engaged with the Hypermess, you can go into euromix.net and download it. It's always for free, just as our other devices. And if you like it, feel free to send it around. And as always, if you need any help with mixing and mastering, you can also get in touch with us via the page.